Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are working remote again this week as I recover from this triple bypass heart surgery I had. But we got a really fun topic for you this week. We're going to talk about something that's been driving me crazy watching all these college softball games, and that's base running mistakes that I think are really hard to understand from players that are so talented. But before we get into the topic today, let's talk about our sponsors for the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats, use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. And please make sure you take advantage of that EFP20 discount. It's a great way for you to save that additional 20%. Anderson's got a great product, and we would love for you to uh, take advantage of that EFP20. It also helps to support the podcast. Also, we would love for you to become a patron. If you're in a position where you can help us, go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. We're talking about $5, 10 or $20 a month. We've got a great group of patrons that have been supporting us for a long time. We really do appreciate those people that have kept this podcast alive. We would love to see some more people come on board. And if you see some value in what we're doing, you want to be able to keep us going, please consider becoming a patron and go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. So, Don, you and I are both pretty old. I'm older than you, but we've both been around the game, around our baseball and softball our whole lives. And one of the things that was drilled into my head a thousand times when I was a young baseball player, and I know you can attest to this, are some golden rule, absolute things about running the bases that if I would have heard it one more time growing up, I probably would have wanted to cry. Things like, you never make the first out of the inning at third. You never make the first out of the inning at, at home. You never make the last out of the inning at third base. Fly ball to the outfield. The runner at first should be going halfway. If you had a nickel for every time somebody said one of those uh, basic rules of base running to you, how much money do you think you'd have in the bank? So I think we'd be pretty comfortable now, right? Yeah, I know. I'd, I'd, <laughs> I certainly would be living on a deserted island someplace uh, drinking my Tais and watching the waves roll in. But here's the thing why I think it's a, a worthwhile topic. When we were growing up, some of those things were drilled into our heads so much that it just became second nature. And a lot of the same stuff is clearly not being drilled into the heads of base runners now because I keep watching games. And one of the things with this recovery, I've had so much time to watch games. I've watched all kinds of games, you know, the ESPN package with the ESPN plus and not just, you know, the, the big games with the SEC teams on you know, the Sunday night game of the week or whatever, but a lot of different levels. And I keep seeing things that just, I know for sure we were drilled consistently to be aware of and to make sure that we didn't make these same mistakes. And I see it over and over again. So let's talk about a couple of them that have really been bothering me. And this is one of those things that I think hopefully will kind of create some discussion. So number one is less than two outs, a runner at third base getting doubled off. Okay. Yeah. To me, this is one of those absolute, you know, we worked our butt off to get you over to third base. And it's not even a, like half the time that I'm seeing it, it's not even like the one in a million kind of shot where you take a, you know, a one step lead off and the girl smokes the ball right to the third baseman standing right on the bag kind of thing. I'm seeing kids that are aggressively leading off of third base, you know, four, five, six steps, 10, 15, 20 feet. And line drives are being hit to the shortstop, being hit to the second baseman, you know, being hit you know, to the first baseman. And they're so far down the line that even there's plenty of time for even those players to double runners off at third. And so in you know, my whole life, it was drilled into my mind. If you're at that runner at third base with less than two outs, your leadoff should be so safe that even if they did hit that one in a million line drive right to the third baseman standing right on the bag, you would still be back where you could get doubled off. And I bet you in the last three weeks, that's really the most I've been watching now. I've probably watched parts of 25 different games. And if I haven't seen at least 20 or 25 kids doubled off at third base, I'll give you a million dollars. Well, Tori, I know uh, that's kind of a double-edged sword because they're trying to get a, a good lead to get home. But to your point, with very few outs or no outs, 
really their main priority. So they're going to be trying to work on us there at third base. So we need to be a little bit more guarded about staying there <laughs> and, and not getting doubled off like that. Also, two reading balls off the bat and knowing, hey, if it's a line drive or lower, you know, I need to make sure it gets through unless we're getting crazy jumps. And I guess that's what they're they're banking on or playing on is, you know, the batter putting it in play and, and us being able to get back. But, uh, yeah, you definitely don't want to give those you don't want to give those runs away. Right. Well, and here's part of why I think this is worth talking about. So I think this seed gets planted now with most players when they're young. Because the younger kids, the younger players, when the defenses aren't very sophisticated, can get away with stuff that just doesn't work once they start to play against better competition. And so we see kids, you know, at a very young age, nobody's telling them, you know, make sure you can get back on a line drive. Make, make sure that you know, the line drive goes through. You know, the, the golden rules we were talking about hearing over and over and over again. I guarantee you, my baseball coach in high school, if I would have got doubled off a third, it was nobody out in an inning. I mean, I would have been running poles for days. You wouldn't have forgotten it. Because it's so drilled into us that we just knew it was an absolute sin. And what I think I'm seeing more and more of is kids think that there's going to be a wild pitch. They think that the catcher is going to bobble the ball. They think that something's going to happen because they're being super aggressive on the bases. Then all of a sudden the defense gets a little bit better and we have a situation where we should have a rally. We should have a chance to score a bunch of runs and we're not even making it very hard for the defense. And again, I know every once in a while you get unlucky and you take a one step lead off and that ball gets scorched right behind you and it all happens so fast. You can't do anything about it. But when I see a lazy line drive getting hit to the shortstop, jumps up and catches it, has time to come down, set her feet and the girl is out by 10 feet coming back to third base something seriously wrong with that picture. And so that's number one is being doubled off at third base with less than two outs. Here's my next one being doubled off at first base on a line drive that hits the left side of the field. So think about this logically. So at first base, obviously you're going to take a little bit more of an aggressive lead off. Now, sometimes, you know, things happen where you got, you know, a hit and run or you know, a runner stealing a base and the ball gets hit, stuff like that can happen. And that might lead to some double plays, but the reality of it is, if I'm a runner at first base and I take my lead off and I see a line drive getting hit to the left side of the field, I shouldn't be running hell bent for leather like it's going to go through because even if it goes through the left fielder, chances are I'm going to have to stop at second base anyhow. You got lots of time. So, yeah. Yeah. So I got plenty of time to get to second base once I see that ball go through. Now, I'm going to periodically get doubled off because the you know timing again, you know, it's a really hard hit ball, it's right at the shortstop. It's right at the third baseman, right at the pitcher, and you don't have time to react and get back. So getting doubled off at first to me is bad when a line drive hits to the left side of the field, but it's not nearly as bad as when it happens at third. But again, it's something that I can re remember at least 100 times in my lifetime. Where are you going on that ball if it, if it gets through? Well, you're going to stop at second anyhow. Right. Right. You're not gaining anything but risk by being super aggressive with that leadoff. So that's my second pet peeve is being doubled off at first on a, on a line drive that sits to the shortstop or third base. And but that one, not nearly as troubling to me as the first one we talked about today, but really kind of annoying as well. Yeah, no, again, anytime we make base running errors, Tori, those players are very valuable to us in competitive settings because I can remember many, many, many uh, games that worrying about just having base runners having a chance to score some runs, you know, those one nothing, two one games, every one of them count a lot. So yeah, yeah, if we're giving them and, away, and it's no good. Yeah, and and here's why I think this is important because here, here, this is why this is a coach prep topic. I see coaches all the time acting like it's bad luck. Well, it's just bad luck. You you took your lead off and she hit a line drive and you got doubled off. No, it's not bad luck. It's bad base running. Right. And. You have to start to separate the difference between bad base running and bad luck. Bad luck is I take a one-step lead off, she scorches it right to the third baseman. I have to kind of duck so I don't get killed by the ball, and the third baseman catches it and is able to double me off at third. Tagging you while they're catching it, yeah. Doubled off the third is bad base running. But if coaches keep trying to act like, oh, you know, stuff happens, you know, that's a bad break, you know, that's, it's no big deal. We're going to continue to see base running mistakes that are going to keep costing teams you know, chances to win. It was a, I'm not going to mention the game today, but I was watching an SEC game today 
that ended up being a one to nothing game and saw a runner get doubled off at third base. This is the exact same situation. Everybody's acting like, oh, that's just a tough break. So no, it's really not a tough break. It's just bad base running. The last one, and this is my maybe the one that drives me the craziest. When you were on first base, Don, and a ball gets hit in the outfield, what would your first base coach be telling you to do? To hang out, get out there, hang out. Halfway, halfway ish. Yep. Get out there and make sure you see where the ball is far enough off that if the ball drops in, you know for sure you're going to advance. Well, here's the one that I saw at least twice this weekend where balls got crushed into the outfield. And they're the kinds of balls that think might get caught, but you're not 100% sure that they will. You don't know for sure exactly if the outfielder's got a beat on it. It's out there on the warning track. It's a really hard hit ball. And I've saw two different situations where the runner at first came back and tagged at first. Both balls ended up dropping in. They were fair. They ended up with yeah. First and second on balls that are bouncing off the fence and hitting the warning track and rolling around in the outfield because by the time the runner at first you know, realized from first base because she's tagging up that it didn't get caught, she couldn't get any further. And both of these are balls that if she had really gone halfway or even further than halfway waiting to make sure that the ball was going to get caught, by the time that ball would have gotten picked up and fielded and, and picked up, she could have scored. And the runner, the hitter, would have had at least a double, maybe a triple. So to me, the whole halfway on a fly ball when you're tagging at first base is something I think, again, we need to keep driving that point home. I cannot imagine anything more aggravating for me if I was a hitter than to bang a ball off the fence and only get a single because the base runner in front of me is tagging up on a ball that they should have been halfway. And sometimes when we talk about going halfway to second, might even mean almost all the way to second. You know, it might mean if I'm not really sure she's going to catch it, I'm going to get as far as I can and still make sure I can get back. So if that ball does drop in, I do have that chance to get the third or score versus gumming up the whole works and, and making a mess out of the bases uh, because we're trying to get one base when we should be thinking about getting two or three. Well, Tori, as, you, as you're describing that, the whole concept there is to be as far off as you can to still be able to barely get back to first if the catch is made. Just so, like you said, you can take advantage of uh, potentially a big hit. And the only time that, to me, the only, only, only time that we would be tagging there at first base is if we know that the ball's in foul play. If it drops foul, you stay there. If they make a great catch, diving catch in foul right. territory, yeah. we're tagging. And foul ball. Well, foul ball is a whole different <clears throat> thing. In a foul ball situation, that runner should tag at first because they're not going anywhere if it doesn't. But I'm talking about yeah. you know, the ones that were driving me crazy are balls in the gap. You know, balls that are out there close to being home runs. Never. And all of a sudden, somebody, you know, see a hitter kind of, you know, towing to first base because they got to wait for the runner in front of them. And you know for sure they could have been at second or third, but they're only getting the, you know, a 220 foot single because the base runner in front of them is, you know, again, trying to get one base. Now, the only other time I think you tag up at first is when maybe you're the trail runner or a situation where you can tell from the, level of the player you're playing, the kind of ball that's being hit, you're 100% confident she's going to catch it. If you're 100% confident she's going to catch it, then the idea of maybe being able to advance 60 feet kind of makes sense. But if you have 1% doubt in your mind that she might not catch this ball, when we talk about halfway, you got, as you said, Don, get as far from first as you can and know that you can make it back if you need to. And then that way, when that ball drops in the outfield, you're looking to score instead of having to stop at second when you could have gotten so much more. Tori, I want to see somebody that's tagged at first and made it to second on a on a fly ball there. That that would be tough to do, too. Yeah, it, well, I've seen it happen occasionally, but it's a situation where, let's say, you know, it's that left fielder that you know doesn't have a great arm that you see setting up under the ball, like way you know deep in the corner, right by the foul pole or you know, right, you know, against the fence and the gap or whatever, that kind of situation, maybe. And maybe if you're a trail runner, let's say it's base is loaded and it's a fly ball and, you know, the girl from third's going to be sco- going to be scoring. But again, then it should still only be if you're 100% sure the ball is going to be caught. If you're not 100% sure the ball is going to be caught, tagging at first base is really, 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 really wrong. It's dumb. <laughs> it, all it's going to do over the course of time is cost you runs and chances have big innings and big rallies i've seen it happen a couple of times it's like i said in the last couple of weeks watching games on tv 
to see a base runner, you know, only getting to second base on a ball that's been rolling around on the warning track for two or three seconds because it didn't get caught, could only get to second by the time they corralled the ball and got it, you know, picked up and thrown in. She couldn't make it to third is really aggravating to me. So um, want us to talk about that a little bit because those are a couple of things that come back to things that were drilled in our heads a thousand times over when we were young baseball players that I'm pretty sure are not always being drilled into the heads of young softball players. I'm going to throw something else out there too, is that a lot of the things that we kind of take for granted, many of these kids need to experience. And if it's not happening in games all the time, then we've got to get it for them in practice. And the anticipation and reaction and making good choices and things like that, something that I think really needs to be practiced. And it's not the most fun thing to practice, but for them to be able to read balls off the bat and to um, understand why we would hang out and things like that, especially for the middle-aged players, you know, the 11, 12, 13, 14-year-old kids, they that's where they need to be acquiring these skills. So coaches that are listening, you know, we need to make time and take time to do the stuff in practice and give them the skills that they need to react proper in the games. And just a perfect example, just so our coaches can kind of build this into practice. You know, we've talked in the past about doing our two ball drill where you have a pitcher and a catcher and you have, you know, the pitcher throwing a pitch. So the base runners can work on their lead off, their timing, you know, getting comfortable with that lead off. Let's have a line of kids at third base. And we're doing this two ball drill and have your third baseman and shortstop or two, you know, two coaches, any, any way you want to do it. So you've got a couple of people over there playing defense and have the runner at third, take the lead off. She thinks is appropriate for third base with nobody out. And then you as a coach tossing that ball up so that you're hitting it about the same time that it gets to home plate, hit a line drive at the third baseman and see if she can get back, hit a line drive to the shortstop, see if she can get back, hit a ground ball so she can read the angle of the ball and know, you know, it's not going to be a line drive. She might not get doubled off and, you know, start to build that kind of thing into the routine. You know, and again, we can do that at first base, like we said before, the appropriate lead off and making sure you don't get doubled off on a line drive to the left side and just build more of that kind of thing in. But I like the two ball drill because it allows the base runners to work on the timing of taking a lead off. And I think that's part of why this stuff is so important because if there's no timing mechanism to it, and I know you're going to hit a line drive to third base and I can plan for it, that's a whole different feeling than if it's going to have some variety to it. So if we want to really help the kids get better at it, there's a lot of ways that we can do it. And we want to make sure that we spend more time working on it because if we do a better job when they're younger, we'll have less situations where you know, we got situa- you know, base running mistakes that are killing rallies and, and hurting teams' chances to win. It's kind of a built-in conditioning thing, too. That gets everybody a little bit tired, Tori. Yeah, well, that's part of why I think we're, a lot of kids are really bad base runners because nobody wants to make <laughs> them run. But again, that's another topic for another day. So we'll come back to that one someday, too. So, But that's going to wrap up this week's edition of Coach Prep. Please make sure you support the Anderson Bad Company. Please become a patron if you can, patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. Go to the fastpitchprep.com website or to your square cuts training discs there. Make sure that you check out the YouTube channel and the blog post. There's tons and tons of information. And again, make sure that you contact us with your ideas, suggestions, topics, questions, or for uh, everything fast pitch player of the week nomination at everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. So for Coach Don McKinley, Our producer, Stan Lewis, this is Coach Torrey. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.